I don't think I can stay in Vegas much longer. It's getting brutally hot. Last night going to sleep, I think it was around 95 degrees. I don't think I got to sleep till about 3 a.m. I was up by 5.30. I got up at sunrise just because there was a friend of mine walking by and Mia spotted her from inside the tent. She started kind of whining and wanting to get out, so I figured I might as well get on with my morning routine. Now I'm just kind of planning out what my next move is for the day and I'm just chilling in the car with these, I have these weather tech sun protectors, sun visors, or whatever you call them, sun shields. I don't think it's realistic for me to stick around here much longer. It's looking like it's gonna be over 100 degrees most days this week. So yeah, I think step one for today is something I've been putting off, getting Mia groomed. She's getting a little shaggy, and so am I. So I'm gonna go drop her off at the daycare spot where she gets her grooming and go get a haircut. Hi. No problem. I'm kind of regretting this haircut, or at least the gel she put in. It's a little bit stiff and I'm not really used to it, but I wear a hat most of the time anyways. So now that Mia and I are a little bit cooler with our hairs cut, I'm gonna grab a coffee from this place called Bad Owl Coffee. I'm still feeling pretty tired from last night, just getting to bed so late and getting up at the crack of dawn. So I feel like I need some caffeine and just grab a lunch. Definitely harder to cook outside when it's this type of weather. It's Right now it's 104 degrees here. So I'm giving myself permission to just kind of treat myself today and have a coffee and probably pay seven to nine bucks for it and grab a lunch that might have a few too many calories and I'm trying to take right now. I think it's necessary for my own sanity and self care doing this that I take advantages of things that will make my life a little bit easier. Um, can I please get a large or extra large um, iced Americano? Okay. Anything else? Can I also get um, the bacon avo egg sandwich? So I bought this neck fan and I'm still trying to decide if it does anything. It does, you can hear it, there's three speeds. And the third speed's pretty loud, honestly. And yeah, I'm just not sure if it does anything other than blow hot air around my neck. Unless, you know, I'm sweating, I think that would probably cool me down, but I'm not quite sweating yet, so. And there's a pretty solid breeze going on, so this thing is probably fairly redundant right now but yeah the thing about vegas and the heat here is that it's dry and compared to toronto where i'm from where it's really quite humid in the summer this feels not bad like i feel 
All right, I can chill out here for a while. The hardest part about dealing with this heat though is really just trying to go to sleep. Like I can deal with this and if I get too hot, I can go back into my car and run the AC for a bit and not have to worry too much about gas. So that's all well and good. It's just trying to sleep. So ultimately, I don't think I can stay here forever. Uh, that was never my plan anyways, but I think things need to be sort of expedited with this heat wave coming in. So. I don't want to like venture off and then have to come back because I uh, forgot anything in my storage locker, that sort of thing. So I really want to have everything with me, you know, that's really the most important thing for me. So what's your plan for this week now that it's really getting hot? It's hard to say. I lost my phone this morning, so can't check on anything. I can't do anything. I got to get my RV into body shops and get estimates, but I can't even do that right now. So kind of stuck. Um, my credit card's run up. I can't use that anymore, and our system's set up against us not to help us. I mean, they send billions of dollars to Ukraine, but... They don't ask anyone if that's okay. You got people that are living on the streets that they don't help. Their rent was always an issue for me. When I first filed for disability, I was actually out on the street. And uh, I got Max for another gentleman. I was walking one day and ran into him just out of the blue. And he said I could go stay with him. Well, I knew the guy was a little different than me, so I was kind of hesitant. But I set up shop in his backyard. I put up a hammock and I lived in his backyard for a year. The guy ended up having a heart attack and he's in a home now. So Max and I hit the road. And I couldn't afford rent. So I got a motor home and that I can afford. It's 200 a month, a little bit over 200. So I'm trying to figure out where to go to next because I don't want to stick around too much with the heat. Almost where you hang your hat. Just remember that. Especially in America, it's so open and free. Yeah. At least for now. Rent is way too much now. It's 2000 a month in L.A. for one bedroom. Yeah. I've had apartments, I've had houses, and it's nice to have a place, but it's not worth it. I mean, you waste so much money on that. Yeah, I'd like to have probably set up in Colorado or something. Colorado? But... Yeah, I was thinking a trip out there would be nice. Yeah, it's a beautiful area. I've been there skiing a bunch of times and been, this, been there in the summer and it's just the temperatures are nice, the weather's nice, the grass, the trees, everything. It's just a little bit of everything there. Depending on where you go, you can buy land cheap there still. If you want to set up somewhere permanent, but... I don't know, Washington, Oregon, those are nice areas too. I like the coast, I like being by the water, but right now it's kind of sketchy. Would you have any advice for me now that I'm planning on leaving and hitting the road? Just watch out for yourself because you can't trust anyone. They'll act like your friend, they'll take advantage. Um, just keep your head on a swivel. As long as you got your supplies and your vehicles running good, you should be all right. But keep up on your supplies, you run out of water, you're hurting. And always have your supplies up. So I've been sitting in the car the past couple hours and I was just doing some handwriting stuff and messing around on the computer. The next thing I know, a couple hours have gone by. I really know that I'm using this heat wave as an excuse to not leave my car and it's pissing me off in the back of my head. I'm conflicted on whether or not I'm being too hard on myself on not just like letting myself have a cheat day. like. It's 100 degrees outside. I really don't feel like going to the store and cooking. But in the back of my mind, I know I should be. And that's the hard part about it. I think when I used to live in a place, 
this option, this super convenient option of just like going on Uber Eats. I would always pull the trigger on that when I would start feeling like this, like even though I feel cooped up and I should get out, it's like I could just stay home and press a button and get food. The big reason why I'm forcing myself to live in my car is to avoid temptations like that. I know that deep down it's for the best and I think honestly if if people kind of thought on it for a second they would probably feel the same way that you know sometimes you just you take the easy road and even the easy road in this lifestyle is a little bit more challenging I'm feeling just depressed today honestly like I just I feel unmotivated depressed it's making the small things seem much bigger than they are and very hard to do and just I feel paralyzed I feel like it's too hot to go outside but I feel cooped up in here and I don't know if there's any middle ground that's not hard you know and there isn't (laughs) so in the past I would always take the easy road when that option's not there in front of you anymore it kind of makes you wonder like am I doing this to like punish myself for some reason or am I doing it genuinely to grow as a person and I'm sitting here rambling on in front of the camera and it just feels like even this is a distraction from what I should be doing which is just getting out of the car and just braving the heat for a minute and going and getting something to eat or at least getting something that I can cook fairly easily but ADHD is paralyzing at times and I think people that have it or are friends with or have loved ones that have ADHD they can see it sometimes in their decisions sometimes those decisions are just eating in a lot or just saying no to going to an event or going to a show or going to whatever with friends because it's just so much easier to not have to deal with that stuff. And I guess this is where Mia comes in because she's gonna need dinner pretty soon. Like always, she's my cue that I need to take care of myself. Like, I can't just like vegetate in the car because it's hot outside. This is just getting to me a little bit. 